Hey guys, I'm here, back with another math video. Today we're going to be proving the Cauchy Swartz inequality. And if you don't know what it is, it's right here. If you write it out algebraically, because I know this notation can be confusing, this is what it looks like. a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared dot 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 multiplied by b1 squared plus b2 squared dot 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 greater than or equal to a1 b1 plus a2 b2 dot 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 squared this is what it looks like and if we actually this will be this will be um important later on if we actually expand this quantity you'll get a1 squared ah that was boring I wrote that all out and guess what I wrote that all out because you'll need it in your proof actually <clears throat> So, try to prove it on your own. Pause the video if you need to, and I'll finish the proof. Okay. I'll tell you why we wrote that expansion out later, because it's going to be important. But first, we the first thing we have to do to prove this is move everything to the left-hand side. So let's do that. P equals 1. I. A. P squared. This is P equals 1. I. P. P squared. Minus equals one i a p b p squared greater than equals. Zero. This is what we need to prove. That was easy enough. Just move on to the other side. And uh, you know what? This looks really complicated. All these sum of a series symbols, etc. Let's try to put it all under one. So this actually is equal to p comma q. We're going to need that extra subscript, and I'll tell you why later. Two i is equal to. Uh, let me see. A P squared B Q squared minus A P B P multiplied by A Q B B Q. Whoa, 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 Zong, that's weird. How come this is equal to this? Well, the reason this is equal to this, and that's the reason why I expanded this, is because actually this thing, this thing right here is basically uh, where you basically com combine the different uh, subscripts so like for every a a p one here there's going to be an, a b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 etc so every for every a p equals one so uh yeah for a so a1 there's going to it's going to be multiplied a1 squared it's going to be multiplied by b1 squared uh, b2 squared b3 squared so basically, we need two subscripts because the subscripts between A and B change. So what this will do is that this will uh, this will go through P. So it will iterate through P, and every time it iterates through P, like P1, it'll go through iterate through Q as well. So it will actually multiply all the com possible combinations of A, P, and B, Q, where A and B have different differing subscripts. And it's the same thing for this. When you expand this thing out. Uh, It'll be like, uh, so as you can see here, a1, b1, multiply by a1, b1. Okay, they have the same subscripts, but a1, b1 times a2, b2, they have different subscripts. And it goes a1, b1 times a3, b3. It goes through that sequence. And next you do a2, b2 times a1, b1. a2, b2 times a2, b2. a2, b2 times a3, b3, etc. So again, it's like a combination of differing subscripts. And because uh, it, and because the subscripts are gonna, might be different with, with every uh, product, you're going to need two of these, P and Q, to actually uh, portray the every single possible combination of AB, AB times AB. Um, it's just sort of complicated, but hopefully this expansion will help you. It's basically uh, a combination of two different subscripts, uh, a combination of subscripts from 1 through I. So yeah, so it basically iterates. So basically this, all you need to know is that this is equal to this. And this is equal to this. And I know that might be a bit complicated, but uh, hopefully my explanation was good enough. So let's keep going. Hopefully you understand why this is equal to this. And uh, actually, let's actually do something interesting. Let's do th this is actually equal to. And I'm just going to move. This. I don't. I don't want to write out P and Q. So it's actually equal to one half a p squared b q squared plus a q squared b p squared minus 
APBQ times AQBP. Whoa, what was that zone? Just getting all even more complicated than me. Well, so basically the explanation for this is that for every AP, AP and BQ, there exists an AQBP where A, A and B uh, switch their subscripts. So for every instance of A1 squared times B2 squared, there is an instance of A2 squared times B1 squared. Okay, so that makes sense, hopefully, that there's uh, for every A1 squared and B2 squared, you just have to have A and B switch their subscripts for A2 squared plus B2 squared. B, uh, B1 squared. So what does that mean? It means that when we, as we iterate through P and Q, as we iterate through P and Q, there's going to be an instance of, uh, there's going to be a instance of the series in which P is equal to 1 and B is equal to Q, right? So there's going to be an instance where it's going to be 1 half A1 squared B2 squared plus uh, A2 squared B1 squared. There's going to be some instance of that somewhere in the secret series, right? Well, that's, the, that's, that, this is when with this is when p equals 1 and q equals 2. Now, in that sum of the series, there's also going to be an instance where q equals 1 and p equals 2. And when q equals 1 and p equals 2, what happens is that you get the exact same thing. You just get a2 squared b1 squared plus a1 squared b2 squared. So you know what that means, right? That means that it's repeated. So because we add, so in this in this original thing we only had AP squared plus BQ squared and that was all well and done. But when we add AQ when we add AP squared plus BQ times BQ squared plus AQ squared times BP squared, that's when uh, we add an extra term. And because of the extra term, this will be repeated. This uh, this will be repeated twice in this series. So whenever whenever uh, P one uh, P equals one and Q equals two. Whenever p equals 1 and q equals 2, that's going to have an instance of this. And then when you switch them, it's going to have another instance of this, where they're the same thing, and the terms are repeated. They're extra terms. We have an extra a1 squared times b2 squared, and an extra a2 squared times b1 squared. And we don't need that, because right here, right here, there's only one instance of every combination. So there's only one a1, a1 squared times b2 squared. There's not two of them, which we get from iterating this sequence. And because there's not two of them, we have to multiply this by 1 half. That's why we have to multiply this by one half. Hopefully that makes sense. This is sort of complicated. I'm sorry. Meanwhile, for this thing, we just uh, we just took these two, multiplied them together, AP times BQ and AQ times BP. So nothing much there. So we just switched some of the you know things and put parentheses around them. Whew! That was some brain twisting work with permutations of P and Q and repetitive terms. Hopefully you got it. It's okay if you don't. This is some complicated stuff. I know I didn't get it the first time I read through it, but let's keep going. Oh crap, I'm running out of room. Um, Give me a sec. Let me delete, hopefully you got this down. Let me just delete this step. So let's go back to here. Let's go back to here. So now, so let's say you have a uh, sum of series. This is going to be equal to 1 half two times this series. And that's intuitive, right? I mean, if you have a sum of, uh, let's say you have, so this is just going to be this one plus two dot dot dot, which is going to be equal to one half two one plus two two, and you just multiply, you just multiply the coefficients and you get the same thing, right? So that's that's intuitive, that works out. So let's do it to our equation right here. So this is equal to one half p q one half of two times one half a p squared b q squared plus a q squared b p squared uh, minus a p b q a q b p. It's just equal to two times that. So let's expand this which is equal to AP squared BQ squared plus AQ squared BP squared because these coefficients cancel out minus 2 
AP, BQ, AQ, BP. Wow, are you seeing what I'm seeing? That looks like the expansion of A minus B squared, where it's A squared minus 2AB plus B squared. Wow, what a coincidence. So this, if you expand this, this is equal to 1 half sigma whatever AP BQ minus AQ BP squared. And what do we have to prove this? We have to prove this is greater than or equal to zero. Well, a square, a number that's squared, is always going to be greater than or equal to zero because you can't have a square of a number be a negative number. So x squared is always greater than or equal to zero. And because this is always greater than or equal to zero, and this is the sum of that, and this is multiplying it by a positive number, this expression is always going to be greater than or equal to zero because the only term in the series is all squares, so which are greater than or equal to zero. So we just proved the cauchy swords inequality, which took a really long time, but we did it. I hope you enjoyed the proof. I hope you didn't buy it, find it too confusing, and I'll see you next week. Which is this times this, PD, is equal to twice the area of this triangle, this triangle right here. So that's equal to 2 times area BPC. And we do the same for the others. So CA times PE is equal to 2 times the area of PAC, which is this. And of course AB uh, times PF is equal to 2 times the area of APB, which is this.